Today, we're going to talk about the Eva Weinberger Cohen collection. Much of her life was really a secret because she never told her children, and she opted to keep both her pre-war life and also her wartime experiences very deeply secret. And she went to the grave without telling her family much about either what she had experienced as a young child or what she experienced during the war. Ava Weinberger Cohen was born in 1924 in a small town in Transcarpathia, the area that had been Czechoslovakia, was later Hungary, is now part of the Ukraine. She grew up as the middle daughter of five in a very deeply religious home. In 1943, Eva came to Budapest. She worked as a jeweler and she joined a Zionist youth organization. And this is as much of the story that her children knew up until a few years ago. They knew she was in a concentration camp, did not know what concentration camp. They knew she spent the years after the war in Switzerland where she later met her husband. It was only in her final months of life that her son found a document linking her to the Kastner transport. Rizzo Kastner was actually a rather controversial figure because his main accomplishment was bribing Nazis. And in this, he organized a transport out of Hungary, which saved 1,686 Jews. There was a question of, is it right to be giving the Nazis money? Is it right to bribe? There was also controversy surrounding who got to go on the train, because on the train were some very wealthy people who helped defray the costs of the rescue mission, were relatives and friends of Kastner. But it's important to remember that many of the people on the train were just simple, ordinary folks who didn't have great means, young idealistic Zionists, and perhaps most moving of all, a group of orphans without any means of support without anybody looking after them, and they were part of this transport as well. When people boarded the transport, they didn't know exactly where they were going. They were told they were going to freedom, but it was a big unknown. They thought they were on the way to Palestine, to a neutral country. In fact, the transport ended up in Bergen-Belsen, the concentration camp in northern Germany. They arrived in Bergen-Belsen in June of 1944, uh, a small group was released early, but the bulk of the transport was not released until December of 1944. So most of the people on the transport were in Bergen-Belsen for five months. From Bergen-Belsen, they were put on a different train. This one did get them to safety and they arrived in Switzerland, which was a neutral country, and they spent the remaining months of the war in Switzerland. Eva's son, discovered shortly before her death that her mother had been on the Kastner transport. They confirmed they were involved in the Zionist underground. Not only did they have false papers for themselves, they were distributing false papers to other Jews living in Budapest under Nazi occupation. And after she passed, her son and daughter found a number of documents, photo album, loose photos that they had never seen before. Both of her family before the war and also of her time in Switzerland. You see her in fields of flowers with friends. You see her in a Zionist training camp, carrying milk buckets and working in different shops to learn vocational skills with the idea of moving to Palestine later. Very poignantly, you see pictures of very young children who we presume are the orphans who arrived on the Kastner transport. These photographs are very important for giving a much more rounded picture of who was on the transport. Kastner himself was a figure of controversy, and it's only now that people are coming to the realization that Kastner was responsible for saving almost 1,700 Jews and was personally responsible for one of the largest rescue missions during the Holocaust of other Jews. And when we look at this and we see the pictures of the Zionist underground, and we see pictures of the young orphans, 
we see the variety of people that Kastner saved and brought to safety.